Hello and welcome back to SuperCloud 7 live from our Palo Alto studios and on demand with top leaders in the data and AI space. You know, the modern data stack has evolved beyond the simpler provisioning of and separation of compute and storage. And as well, the point of control is shifting from the database or the lake house, if you like, to the data catalog. And that's driven by open source standards and the desire to bring any compute engine to any data to build increasingly diverse and intelligent data apps. But this catalog could prove to be you know, a new challenge for users because vendors are going to try to use this to create preference for their tools. Now, strategy-wise, customers could choose to put all their data eggs into a single platform basket, but that strategy is limiting and proving impractical. Emerging open standards support a decentralized data strategy, but consistent and trusted governance, a big theme of SuperCloud 7, remains challenging for clients. Our next guest is working on innovations that augment both monoliths and emerging catalogs to create maximum optionality to support the diverse user models and applications that are coming online with Gen AI and also RAG. She depicts the future data stack as an hourglass with a standards innovation model analogous to the internet. She is the creator of Data Mesh and now the founder and CEO of Next Data, escaping the heat of the United States, George Gilbert and I are pleased to welcome from down under Jamak Degani. Jamak, great to see you again. Great to see you both. It's a pleasure to be here. Okay, let's get into it. Your premise is that today's so-called modern data stack is being pressured from two ends. First, multiple data sources and types of data. And number two, at the other end, increasingly intelligent data apps. And the state of the data stack, you've talked about this a lot, has become so complex as we're showing here. Give us your narrative on this picture and take us through it, please. Sure. I think there are two undeniable realities in this picture, the left-hand side and the right-hand side. And the left-hand side, as you mentioned, is this complexity around data sourcing. Data can live in any organization, in any format, on, you know, captured in any type of storage. It's that diversity that is just an essential you know, element of our organizations or our industry in general. Uh, and creates an immense amount of complexity on the right hand, left hand side. And the other kind of undeniable reality is the right hand side, which is the application of data is evolving and it's rapidly changing as we're speaking right now. The application of data, you know, started its life as, you know, seem maybe more simpler BI analytics, um, kind of historically looking at the patterns turned into, um, Model, machine learning training models, the traditional training methods that we have, and now it's changing into fine tuning large models, uh, augmenting large models with drag and, and many others in, in between. So the diversity and proliferation of application of AI and ML analytics across the business and the, the diversity and the complexity of sourcing data are the, I think the two pressure points that constantly test how we manage that middle piece, that data management in middle place. And we've gone through a couple of you know, shifts around that, right? Uh, but fundamentally operating model of that data management in the middle has remained the same. So you know, tra traditionally we had, and we still have, right? ETL, uh, extract, transform, or load first, and then transform, put data in one, one place, lake, warehouse, then layer, the context that was missing, right? Then we have a generation of data tools around metadata and context creation. Then we'd realize, well, we really don't have a link between how the business speak about the data and the esoteric encoding of that data into the storage. So we layer with semantic graphs that the moment we create them, they're out of date. Uh, and then we have to solve the discoverability and the governance and control. So we layer with, you know, catalog technologies that allow, um, access control, discoverability, getting people to the source of data. And I think that middle part, that data stack, we've gone through the generation with like single stack ones, you know, the, the generations of, um, you know, the oracles of the world and um, the, 
the terror data of the world. And then, then we moved into the modern data stack, which included a lot of different tools need to be plumbed and wired together. Um, and now we're shifting again. I think we're shifting into, well, you know, wiring modern data stack is actually really hard. And a lot of executives are burnt out by just doing metal work and not getting to the real data work. So they're consolidating and that consolidation is happening in that right hand layer of technology uh, with integrated like data analytics solutions. So, so I guess um, the, the point is here that we've got to like step back and look at that middle part and find a, uh, find a data stack that caters and survives, caters to this essential complexity of left and right and can survive those pressure points. And at the bottom of this, chart, uh, you know, it's tough to read, but you, you, you've you got the brittle pipelines. It takes weeks or months to, to go from data to value. It's brittle because if anything changes, <laughs> you have to start over or you have to wait for somebody who knows what you've called hyper-specialized roles to, to fix their piece. And at the very bottom, you say Gen AI creates 10X more complexity, spawning the next generation of, of technical debt. So, okay, yeah. if, if we weren't depressed, <laughs> Where, where, where we go from here? So George, take it from here. Um, I know you got a follow-up question. So um, what we saw, Zamak, was once, once we separated, we, we successfully separated storage from compute, the next stage with open data was separating data for compute. But to do that, there needed to be a new source of truth. And as you were describing, that sort of became the catalog plus plus, which was the one place for governance and the lineage um, and to the extent, you know, we had one place to find what happened to this data, where did it come from, you know, who has what, you know, uh, permission to do what to it. And, and so that's become uh, the new bottleneck because every time you modularize something, something else becomes a point of control, maybe, maybe not a bottleneck, but a point of control. So maybe like you can explain to us um, how you can move this from a, a potential bottleneck and point of control to something that is um, where the, the source metadata semantics policy is something that's more easily accessible to many more tools. And so the tools don't have to be hardwired to a single catalog. Yeah, that's a great question. I think, you know, catalogs have great utility and their utility is in exposing and in externalizing the data and metadata that, you know, is really scattered around different technology stacks. I mean, that's the reality. Um, even, you know, authoring perhaps the control and pushing that into down to different layers of the stack. I think when it becomes a problem is the word that you used is the single source of truth for everything. And I think if you've known me, I've, uh, <laughs> I generally react, uh, don't react positively to when we, you know, put all our eggs into one place and create that yet another bottleneck. I think um, the, the difference, I mean, the shift that needs to happen in, again, it's in my opinion, again, using the past, you know, the digital advances that we've seen as, you know, anal analogous examples uh, is what need to happen is the concept of control, the concept of discoverability needs to be baked in close to the data um, as a new unit of our architecture and become decentralized. And then, Yes, the tools like catalogs or discovery tools or whatever developer platforms, or whatever we want to call them, they can either display the emergent information from these units. I call them data products in the concept of, you know, within the concept of data mesh, or they can push down and communicate to them the commands that need to be executed uh, on them, whether it's a point of, let's say, um, enforcing a particular policy around. Um, right to be forgotten. So I think the, the challenge that we have 
for our future data science to solve is that on one hand, we will have the complexity of the physical infrastructure. That's not going to change. I mean, with Gen AI, we will not be able to, you know, store every conversation that we have, this conversation, this video, all of the unstructured data that we are creating and try to centralize it in one physical location. So that's that's just, I think it's an impossible task. So if we, we have to embrace this complexity of the physical layer um, that we are facing. And on the top, uh, I think it's human nature, that sense of autonomy, um, the optionality, the personalization, like as a developer or as a data user, you know, I want to use my tools of choice, uh, my experience of choice. So that diversification of experience will exist at the top of this stack as we move to the application of the data. So then the next generation of the data stack need to, on one hand, hide and abstract the complexity of control, complexity of different types of formats of data existing in different places, and simplify that. And on the other hand, give optionality to, to the experience, right? And again, we've seen this, seen this many times. Like right now, you and I are speaking to each other. I'm on a completely different experience on my MacBook. You are you have a, probably a different experience on your computer, but we are able to have that personalized experience and communicate at the same time underneath the routers and the, you know, the, the, the bridges and all the technology underneath to get us to communicate with each other is also very diverse. But what happened was this narrow band of kind of this hourglass, TCP IP and HTTP, like the set of standards allow us to have this. And the same story can be told again with compilers like LLVM, like compilers allow pro programmers write applications in many different languages and run those applications on many different types of hardware, but they standardize that, that middle bit, right? Uh, that simplifies working with different complex infrastructure and give you optionality of experience. And I think th the point here is that we need to push down some of those capabilities that are being bundled into this single stack integrated catalog plus plus type of experiences into that standard narrow um, kind of waste of this hourglass. And, and, and we have a picture of this. I mean, I'd like to go deeper on that and, and ask you how you're thinking about moving beyond this, what you call the era that we're currently in, the, the catalog plus plus era. Uh, it, can you take us through this diagram, this hourglass that, that you've provided us? Sure, yeah, absolutely. And I want to preface that Dave by saying, you know, this is, this is unfolding as we speak. So we still have time to see how the environment settles, uh, what capabilities get pushed into single integrated experiences and what capabilities don't. So we might be a little bit uh, premature in terms of uh, knowing with conviction what it's going to happen or mm -hmm. how it's going to unfold. But the picture that I'm depicting here is that the data management uh, needs a set of kind of standards uh, in the middle to allow, again, as we discussed, like a very diverse application of the data at the top and very diverse kind of storage and uh, compute in the, uh, at the bottom. And that narrow band, we, we see the evolution of that already unfolding with, you know, Iceberg or Delta Lake, like formats, data formats uh, that we are consolidating toward to allow hiding the complexity of where the data is stored, the data format, um, can facilitate that, right? Uh, we can have many different types of application on the same data format, by but, but the data format abstracting the complexity of the storage or diversity of the storage. Um, to me, that's analogous to saying, you know, in the TCP IP stack, we have agreed that the ethernet layer, how the packets are moving on the physical wire, we have an agreement upon. So you and I don't need to really worry about how the packets are moving right now. And as you come toward the experience of the user, the data analyst, the data scientists, the data developers of the future, that's where some of the missing pieces of this stack need to come to exist. What we are working on is if 
the complexity of uh, policies, semantic definition, metadata, managing the transform. There's a lot of pieces that go into this build this, the whole end-to-end -end supply chain of building a data product. And I think that there is opportunity there to standardize that complexity and put it in a box just the same way that Docker did, you know, for building applications and create new set of standards that again, simplify the full experience of data application, data product creation. And I, and I think that's where perhaps the common troll can be pushed down to. So I, I want to come back to that and, and help our audience understand something that they've been telling us they're struggling with. Uh, they sure. are being presented with and, and pushed hard with, with a lot of different optionality on solutions, mm -hmm. on catalogs, open source, some open, you know, hybrid open source. The, the cloud vendors all have them. So whether it's, you know, Polaris with technical metadata or, or Unity having, you know, more full capabilities in open source or, you know, Horizon or, you know, AWS's version, Microsoft with Purview and a catalog of catalogs. If I understand it, your vision is trying to just abstract all that complexity so that it doesn't really matter. You, the reality is you're just going to use all of the above in some way, shape or form. Yeah. Um, and, and the next era uh, will take us beyond that. So we don't have to worry about uh, managing that ourselves and all the inconsistencies and, and, and harmonization efforts that have to take place to rationalize all that. Is that correct? Exactly, absolutely. And I think that requires us to reimagine the data ecosystem in, in a different way. Again, I come from the angle of data mesh. I come from the angle of decentralization, embracing complexity as a fact of reality. And if we do that, then we have to, again, start with the user, the experience of user, whether this user is creating data as a value product asset or the user trying to discover that to give those folks optionality to use the data or create the data with the tools of their choice without compromising discoverability, quality, and governance, we've got to create new abstracts. And those abstracts must be standardized, right? They, they have to be good enough for a large population of uh, data users to use them. And, that, and those abstracts are built, in, in my opinion, on a more decentralized set of principles so that we don't end up with yet another you know, bottleneck. Um, but there is a there's a lot of complexity that needs to be abstracted the way and the, 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 the you know the challenge is again with any form of standardization or abstraction there is a balance between simplicity and obscure obscuring information right you don't want to obscure the experience of the user you don't want to obscure SQL or python or the languages they use but you want to abstract how those get executed on the diverse set of compute as an example. So I, I think there is a, we, we have a, a lot of work ahead of us for that to be a reality. So I wonder if we could explode that sort of, that narrow part of the hourglass uh, and, and drill deeper into the solution that you're envisioning and working on, which we're showing here. Maybe you could explain if a, a data product has its own c container, if we can call it that, how mm -hmm. do you surface the transformation, the, semantic modeling, the metadata, the policies, et cetera, so that developers yeah. can get to the richness and avoid you know, the, the, the bottleneck of the catalog plus plus. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I think if we think about, if I use the analogy, and it's not a great analogy, but it's the closest one. If we think about Docker and what it did for application developers at the time, uh, at the time, application developers required interoperability, portability, simplicity of operating applications that are, their APIs are discoverable, they are, um, you know, they're easily manageable. What Docker did was said, okay, if you are, you know, a C++ app developer or a Ruby app developer, whatever app developer, just keep doing what you're doing. You develop applications with the language of choice, you store your data in the storage of choice, but 
with a simple manifest file, with a simple text file, I will articulate the boundary of this application and its dependency to the environments and the pieces that it needs to use. And I will manage this application as a portable unit that then we can run in different, different environments. And that became the foundation for microservices. I think in the data world, it's actually a lot more complex, but we can apply the same notion that a data product, and by data product, we mean, you know, a domain oriented encapsulation of compute and storage. Um, in this case, let's go with, you know, sales information. We have, you know, um, let's say monthly sales uh, metrics and their pre predictions for the next month as a particular data product. There are a lot of pieces that need to go into that, as in an application, the data product developer needs to write the logic, whether it's SQL or Python, to generate that aggregation. It needs to describe the semantic that govern the meaning of the data, however it's stored. Describe the policies that governs how long this data needs to be retained, who needs, who can access it. So the idea of containerization is to orchestrate and manage all of the pieces necessary for that sales data to be a living, breathing, reliable, governable, discoverable data as a product. And those bits and pieces include, you know, where shall I run my compute? Where does the data get stored? What is it stored? Where is, what is the semantic of this data? Like regardless of this data being stored as embeddings and, you know, in a vector database for a RAG flow or in a SQL table for uh, a report, what is the semantic that defines this data? And what's the, the relationship of that semantic to other data products in the ecosystem and beyond? Um, and, and package that as so, what are the policies that govern? And, and that simple kind of Docker manifest here, we use that data product kind of manifest, uh, allows, and a platform allows to run the transform, to you know, build the data product, to bring the data product to life. And we want to do that in a way that is, is a standard as in I don't if I if I'm on a snowflake stack kind of my data products look and feel the same if I'm on a Databricks stack my data products look and feel the same if I'm a native AWS stack it is the same so that's that's where the standardization come to play is that how do we encapsulate this complexity put a thin layer of you know metadata and orchestration configuration around it so that regardless of where it runs and where it stores this data in a consistent way, it can describe its semantic in a consistent way. It can be controlled as close to that, you know, compute and storage as possible. Um, and in a consistent way, it can be discovered. And I and appreciate you kind of bringing it back to the original super cloud concept, George, which was, it was kind of, it was obviously a buzzy term, but what Jamak just described, George, is, is exactly why we started the super cloud series. <laughs> well, and Shamak, you also touched on something that the hardest part in there was, um, you know, there's there are a lot of things that you would identify bottom up at the container level, but then something bigger emerges. And and yeah. right now, the source of truth is the guy who digs through all the complexity and then has this, the narrow waste is around the catalog plus plus, which is really the only place you can go to the source of truth. So all your tools are bound to that source of truth. So whoever controls that source of truth is kind of preferenced with the creation and, and evolution of their tools. Now, what you're proposing, I just want to hone in on one thing, which was the semantics, because for five decades, you know, we've had this desire and, and many efforts to create a a model of an enterprise. And they've all been like the La Brea tar pit. You, you, you know, put one foot in and you just get, you sink because, you know, this intergalactic thing is just never going to succeed. Just maybe describe for us in the time, you know, in the short, because we don't have a lot of time, I imagine, but how a semantic model can emerge from the bottom up. There might be some top-down standards, but how can all these bottom-up pieces emerge into something coherent? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, you're very right that in this model, if we decentralize control and decentralize definition of data models locally, 
to where the data products are owned and controlled within the domains of business, you know, with, with, with people that, in the hands of people that are closest to that, what would happen is that locally, a data product defines its own semantic. But data product doesn't live in a vacuum, right? It lives within an ecosystem of other data products. So uh, that local definition of a semantic with connection to its adjacent data products within the ecosystem, if we do that just in a repeated way, like local people within a domain, let's, uh, let's take a pharmaceutical example, right? We have in the journey of uh, medicine development, we have drug discovery. And the notion of a medicine or a drug in a discovery phase is defined by a set of compounds, uh, properties of those compounds and so on. It's, a, it's, a, it's not a chemical construct. In the phase of clinical trial, it's defined as a generic brand of a particular drug. And in the phase of manufacturing is now, and sales is perhaps a branded medication, right? But these are all different aspects of the same construct of a drug. So what happens in, in this model is that people in the, during the research, they define locally their data products as a set of compounds. People in clinical research are defining their medicine with different parameters, but with a generic name. But locally there, they are referring, there is a hyperlink to the data product semantic at the point of research because they got that information from research team to create the clinical trial. And similarly, at the manufacturing phase, they are defining the parameters around the drug that matters to manufacturing but they can have a link back to the data product as a referenceable entity uh, in that ecosystem that defined, um, it was defined as a generic brand in clinical research. They don't have a link back to the compound because that's too far down into the, you know, into the lineage of the medicine. But what would happen is as we have a standard around this data product as in, and its semantic definition with these links, as we have a standard around universal addressability. I mean, we don't have to invent this. This exists, right? We have web URLs for these data products. Then what would happen, that, emer that mesh of, that graph of, many, you know, this special branded medicine is the same as this, um, you know, generic brand is the same as this set of compounds at research, that graph emerges. So we don't have to create something on, you know, in, a, in an abstract, in our isolation, from the reality of the data. Okay, that's you know, powerful. Um, it's, it's now, uh, I think it's almost coming up on five years since you introduced the concept of, of data mesh. Um, you joked, I think, Jamak, uh, at one point people would say, well, how do I buy one? Can I get it in an appliance? Uh, but so, first of all, congratulations on this thing, you know, getting a, a life of its own. Um, give us the update uh, so first, can, give us the update on, on Next Data. You know, where are you guys at uh, as a company and, and traction and give us the quick commercial. Sure, absolutely. So um, yeah, we are a Bay Area startup, you can call us. Uh, we started, you know, developing the product as uh, with this data product containerization as a nucleus of it. And of course you have to build utilities around it for it to be useful. Uh, we started building that in um, early 2023, end of 2022. We are taking our first customer, which is a large global retailer to production this quarter. And I'm smiling because it's just, uh, I think for any founder, it's a moment that you see real data flowing through your system. It's uh, it's like giving birth to, you know, to a, to a child. Uh, it's, you, you feel exhilarated. So uh, that's where we are. We are working with, um, uh, you know, customers that are, open to uh, experimentation and working with novel technologies. Uh, so we are, you know, evolving that. Our aspirations are really around creating, helping and contributing to this narrow waste of innovation in the data stack uh, and become and create the standards that help with that higher layer within that hourglass. I think the, the rest of the industry is doing an amazing job. You know, we've seen iceberg, we've seen, you know, work around Delta, uh, which are helping with the lower layers of that stack around, you know, file format. And I think where we could be 
you know app applied is the the higher layer of the stack so there, there would be definitely contribution from mix data uh, to the open standards around that um, well congratulations again and thanks so much for your time Jamak. we really appreciate it thank you for having me it was a great conversation uh, you bet uh, and thank you for watching stay tuned more great content coming up from supercloud 7 live from Palo Alto and on demand with leaders in AI and data. We'll be right back.